I remember when I was a kid up in northeastern Connecticut, I used to like to go out in the woods with my younger brother and we would just go exploring. And we, we'd usually try to find things like, you know, old houses and stuff, which would be just the foundations. Whenever we found one, my brother had this amazing knack of finding the dump. We'd call them bottle dump. I'm recalling those old dumps that we used to find uh, up in Connecticut because uh, they illustrate the fact that, uh, that landfills and dumps have been with humanity all the way back as far as you can go, all to prehistoric times, even in the caves. They had left dumps of the bones they ate from and the arrowheads that they'd used that were broken and everything else to, tells you what their life was like. Um, our landfills today tell us what our life is like. They, they contain uh, all the products we use. They contain all the things that industry makes. They even contain nuclear waste sometimes. There's uh, about 100,000 dumps in the United States, according to the EPA. And half of these, you know, 50,000 of them, line the coastlines of the United States, the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Gulf Coast and also, I guess, the Great Lakes, um, because that's where 90 million Americans live, uh, apparently with most of them within on land that's uh, less than 10 feet above sea level. What all these dumps have in common is that they typically were sited on land that was considered by the municipality or county that was locating them to be wasted land, land that couldn't be developed to be, you know, a, uh, uh, a good uh, source of property taxes. So that meant usually wetlands. It meant uh, coastal floodplains that were prone to periodic flooding. Uh, high water tables and things like that that made building uh, impractical or impossible. So the lands were considered waste. But one result of that is that those lands did get occupied by people where the landfills were. It got occupied by very poor people who could get a piece of a parcel of land cheaply. Uh, not because poor people wanted to be in the dump, but it's the only place they could afford to get a, a house or put a trailer. So. Uh, when things go wrong at a dump, uh, what it impacts mostly are poor people who don't generally have much political clout in the system to get any action taken. So the fact that these landfills are located in, in uh, low-lying land and are confronted with sea level rise, which is already starting to happen, and, and some of them are actually feeling it coming into the low water tables, so they have to pump the water out uh, to keep it from flooding out the leachate in the dumps, is that um, we're, we're um, putting at risk not just the water tables, but also the wetlands, which it, uh, lie along these coasts, and the estuary mouths of rivers. And these are the places where uh, 90% of sea life in the deep ocean and on the coasts come to uh, mate, lay their eggs, and for the uh, young of those uh, sea creatures to grow to a size where they can uh, you know, go out into the deep ocean and have a chance of surviving. If these dumps are overwashed by either the rising sea or by the storm surges that come along with that. Because remember, when, when sea level is 10 feet higher, that means that the storm surge, which can be, you know, with a Cat 4 hurricane, 15, 20 feet of extra waves coming in on top of that 10 feet, that comes way inland. And it's uh, not just water rising calmly, it's waves coming in. Uh, the dumps are going to be broken open. They're going to spill their contents into the wetlands and the toxins that are with them. A big problem with, uh, that I found in researching this story was that the, the managers of landfills and the officials that are responsible for regulating them are in denial about the problem. Um, many of them said they hadn't even thought of sea level rise as an issue for the landfills. And the ones that did 
said, oh, we're set, we're, we're all right, because you know we've factored in sea level rise through 7100, through, through 2100, um, and it's only gonna be like three feet, and we're good with that, because we're at 10 feet, uh, or something like that, you know, uh, some variant of that. Uh, the problem is that their estimates are out of date. They use the intergovernmental panel on climate change uh, which is always reporting low numbers that get, um, because they're compromised and politically approved, and they're always uh, being immediately overtaken by reality of what scientists are finding. So they have to issue corrections and raise them. The problem with underestimating sea level rise uh, and with not taking any action is that as uh, Harold Wanless, the emeritus professor of climate studies at the University of Florida in Miami, has pointed out it's a lot more expensive to try to remove a landfill that's uh, e either been overtaken by water or uh, that's become an island, like what will happen to these big landfills in uh, the Meadowlands in New Jersey with all New York's garbage and all New Jersey's garbage, these things are like a couple hundred feet high. And if they're surrounded by water and just islands, which is what's going to happen to them, uh, it's gonna be much more expensive to try to clear them out uh, and remove everything than it would be while they're still uh, in dry land and, and trucks could come up and haul the stuff away. Only trouble is removing all these landfills that are threatened is not going to be cheap. Uh, estimates have ranged as high as a trillion dollars to, uh, nationally to clear all these things out. And, and the problem again is there's no federal money to support landfills and, and remediating landfills. The, the federal government pays for, uh, as at least as a backup, for Superfund sites, which are the industrial sites that have highly toxic uh, industrial chemicals in them, but they don't do anything for landfills. That's the responsibility of county and, and city governments and, and ultimately the state governments. And they don't have that kind of resource uh, availability to, to fund the, the, the kind of removals we're talking about here. Now the thing about landfills is when the seas come in uh, or the storm surges, which will be the first time we'll see water coming in to some of these landfills, uh, they uh, confront two different things. The closed landfills, some of which are, have been forgotten. They don't even, people don't even know where they are because uh, they were just covered over with dirt and then you know wild uh, grass grows over it and, and uh, scrub brush. Um, all that will be washed away really quickly and then the contents will be, be uh, accessible to the waves coming in. Um, if they're newer, they were covered over with a plastic, half inch thick plastic cover, but that won't last long either uh, when the waves come in, when you have hurricane waves and things like that coming in. It also breaks down under, you know, in the, under conditions of salt water. So if they don't get washed up way by a storm and they're sitting underwater, it's gonna decay very quickly. The proverbial shot across the bow that tells us what we're up against here happened when Hurricane Harvey in 2017 hit the Houston area coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. It came with a 16-foot storm surge and two or three feet of rain. An incredible amount of rain came uh, in that area. And the rivers that passed through there and the bayous in that area really just flooded everything. So there was a lot of toxic waste in these Superfund sites. And one of them covered with a concrete cover and that was broken open by the storm surge. So even the most secure cover that they can make was broken open by these waves. And the contents of this uh, dump was washed into the river and the surrounding bayous. You know, even though uh, w these dumps, the landfills, are not Superfund sites, before 1980, you could put anything in them. And, they, and industry did. They just used them as their dumping ground and they put whatever toxics and heavy metals and uh, you know, oil products and everything into those dumps and it's still there, it doesn't go away. It doesn't rot, it doesn't disappear and it's gonna wash out into our waters. 
And so it goes, state after state, county after county, city dump after city dump. The water's rising, the dumps are increasing, but there's 140 million tons of garbage produced in the United States every year, and half of that's going into coastal landfills. And unless politics changes, unless uh, people uh, demand action on these landfills, unless we as a society realize that we have to deal with this, the end result is totally predictable. All of these landfills along the coast are going to be overrun with water and all of these landfills are going to be busted open. No matter what the managers say, it's going to happen. Um, the, the covers on these big landfills are going to be washed away like so much sand castles on the beach. And, the, and you know, remember when the waves come in from the ocean, the big storm waves, they come through a whole bunch of houses, at cars, stores. They pick up the, the destructive rubble from what they destroy and they sweep it into these landfills. All of that stuff is going to just shred the exposed plastic covers of these landfills and then the waves will take everything out. So all, the, all of man's best efforts will fail and we'll end up with destroying our entire coastal waters.